Yo, what's going on? We're about to leg up this seat. Right here's the seat. Here's the legs. I'm gonna show you how we leg it up. And then afterwards, it's gonna look like this over here. And then after that, it's gonna look like one of these chairs. So here's the beautiful, beautifully carved seat. I'm gonna flip it, put it upside down. I have hand plane the surface of this uh, because after I get the seat, the legs in, then you're not gonna be able to do that no more. I've got the, the legs all together. Over here's my high glue. Here's my little Weed Valley hammer. I like this one, it makes a nice noise. I'm used to it when I'm doing this. So, I'm gonna pull my high glue out. I got it cooking in a little salsa jar here. This stuff stinks big time. It smells like butt, and that's no joke. I like to do three dips in each hole. If you notice while you're look, looking at this, these holes are tapered. So they're tapered at six degrees, which means it's a locking wedge. So if look at the top of the legs here, and each one of those is also tapered. So when I put this all together, they lock in the upward position, and then I'm gonna double lock them by driving a wedge through the top just like a, a, an axe head. So it's basically the same joinery that's used to make an axe. You stick the handle into the head, then you drive a wedge, uh, a wedge from the top. And as long as you don't leave your axe out in the rain, it pretty much stays good forever. But these chairs, actually I have left these out in the rain and they're all pretty good. Now these are all kiln dried too. So I've cooked these in the kiln for several days and uh, just the tenons here and they are as small as they're going to be without be being on fire. So now I just put that hide glue on it and uh, ooh, stretch this wood out. And uh, that's going to make it swell up. Come on baby. Okay, and we're in. Okay. Remove my clamp. I'm gonna flip this over on my handy dandy chair maker's bread chair. I remove this chisel for safety purposes. Now, all I gotta do is drive these wedges in. And so I got these wedges just cut at slightly oversized, so for example, if the hole's 5 eighths, I got this just a hair over 5 eighths. And that's, uh, I mean, you don't need to do that for like any kind of extra strength or anything. I just do that to make sure that there's no gaps. Which sometimes you get a gap, but it ain't no big deal. So I'm gonna stick that in the hole. And then, I'm gonna tap that down. That's tightening up the wedge this way. Now, I'm going to take the bottom of my foot, I'm going to put it right on the top of that leg on my bench right there. I'm going to hold just the leg, and listen to this sound. I'm going to go ahead and drive this in and listen to the sound, and you can hear when it's perfect. That's the key to this, because if you go too far, it'll blow the seat out. possibly ever be. And now it's so tight that the, the, all the, the entire, all the parts together resonate as one. So what I mean by that is um, if you pluck the bottom of this leg like a guitar string, then you'll be able to feel the same vibration.
sound again. I'm not sure if you can hear that on the camera, but that's pretty critical to it. Smear a little glue on this. I always get my wedge started before I pound the leg in because if you get that too tight then you can't get that damn wedge in and sometimes it's a pain in the butt. So I get the wedge starter first. There we go. I put the leg right over. I don't want any rebound whatsoever so I gotta put it so the force is transferred directly to the floor. Ooh, this one's, this one's a low profile. Oh, there we go. That's perfect joinery. That's as good as joinery you can ever get. Right there. Go ahead and wipe the glue off. These front ones you really don't gotta worry about because uh, those are pretty easy to clean up with the smoke shave afterwards, but these back ones are a pain in the ass, so you definitely want to uh, wipe off as much glue as possible back here. See, these are in that curve region right there, so you have to use a, a curved spoke shave. And you can only go so many directions, and then it hits the end grain of that leg, and it likes to mess up your finish there. So you gotta try to get this as good as possible so you're not having to fight with glue later on. And that's all, all there is to it. That's perfect joinery right there. That'll be, this will be a nice chair that'll hopefully last for 300 years, I, I hope. It, it can't be done any better, I know that. This chair here, we can look at this one. This chair is several years old, and I've left this out in the rain twice. And, and you can see evidence of it. The seat looks really nice, but that's because I sit in it so much it polishes the paint. But if you look all over it, this thing's got water stains all over it. Look at that. And the joinery is still very strong in this. Very strong. It's never come apart at all. If I took some steel wool and polished this chair out, it, it would shine just like the seat, but I don't know. I'm not that too into it. Thanks for the time.